Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around, across the earth today, in Jesus' name. All right? It's a wonderful live stream. We are here to discuss the plan of salvation. I hope that's what the title says, because I do remember changing it, but I can't remember what I changed it to. All right? We're going to talk about the plan of salvation, and that is one of the 26 articles of the Apostles' Faith, um, of the Apostles' Doctrine. Um, it's really important for us to understand the plan of salvation. It kind of ties into baptisms as well. Um, it's important to understand that Jesus Christ actually has a plan for you, um, for your salvation. So when people would denounce the plan of salvation or uh, they would have the plan of salvation as a one-stop destination, that doesn't really cut it. With Jesus Christ, everything that the Lord Jesus Christ did was to stop us from going to hell. And because it was to stop us from going to hell, he did so many different things um, for us and left things for us and brought it himself so that when we look into the scriptures with our eyes opened with understanding, we can actually see what Jesus Christ wants for us. So the first place I want to go to uh, go today is Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Um, and verse 44 and he said unto them these are the words which i spake unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled so jesus here is talking about prophecies so there was prophecies that moses spoke about and there was prophecies in the book of psalms um, that spoke about jesus christ that the apostles at this particular time didn't know existed all right which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets so you have the 12 minor prophets and then you have the major prophets and then you have people like nehemiah all right um and in the psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures so you have to understand, when you come to Jesus Christ, and when you're dealing with the Bible, this Bible is a mystery. Like it's, it's so mysterious because Christ himself is a mystery. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. I can probably take it even deeper than that, you know. Um, let's see if I still remember. No, I'll keep it to Ephesians 3. I don't want this to be long. Okay, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. Because God gives a man the grace. And that man, when he speaks to people, will give them the grace. You receive the grace. Because you receive grace by hearing. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So God, this is why this is why baptism is so important. The man of God is supposed to go inside of Jesus Christ. So the man of God goes inside Jesus Christ by water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And it has to be in the name because the name of Jesus Christ is the name of God that's given to us for our salvation. All right. So the man of God goes inside of Jesus Christ. And then when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes inside of you. Right. And now the Holy Ghost is inside of you. You have to understand the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is also known as the word of God. All right. Because God is spirit. John chapter four, verse 24. So the Holy Ghost is the word of God. So now the word of God is inside that man. Hear, hear, faith come by hearing hearing comes by the word of god how can a man preach unless a man be sent you see how can a man hear unless a man preach how can a man preach unless he be sent how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ christ is a mystery so I want you to understand today, when we're talking about the plan of salvation, Christ has a plan for you to go to heaven. 
And it's important that we look in the Bible and we look through the scriptures uh, at the truth of God's word. It's not the way we want to do it. It's not the mankind way. It's the Bible way. We have to do things the way that God wants us to do them in order to satisfy the author of our eternal salvation. That's Jesus Christ. So there's many different places um, throughout the scriptures that you can see different parts. Um, there's many different places uh, throughout the scriptures that you can see different parts of the plan of salvation um, evidenced. So then we're going to go to these and then I'm going to break the plan of salvation down. The first thing I do want to say is that the plan of salvation is like a pregnancy for a woman. It's like the entire conception to deliverance process. So if you want to have a baby, you need to go to a certain place. There's two rooms that you're going to go to when, you, when, when, when you're talking about babies, right? The delivery room to get the baby out and the bedroom to get the baby in. Praise the Lord. The conception process, all right? So conception um, happens in your heart because Jesus is really concerned with the human heart condition. Naturally, yeah. Um, excuse me. Naturally, excuse me, I'm just going to blow my nose, all right? <coughs> Naturally, praise the Lord, but also um, spiritually at the same time, all right? So naturally is concerned with your heart condition, but also spiritually as well. Um, so spiritually, God wants to see the condition of your heart, that your heart is right. That's why conception begins in the heart condition because that's the first place and the first thing that God wants to do is to cleanse your heart after conception the woman will get pregnant so after you've accepted Jesus in your heart your pregnancy as a Christian is being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ then after a woman gets pregnant she delivers the baby at the fullness of the time your deliverance as a Christian comes when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The baby cries, yeah, the baby cries, and that is you exercising your, 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 um, that is you exercising your, your faith as a Christian by speaking in tongues. Then the baby grows up after it's first spoken inside of the deliverance room, the baby grows up and becomes an adult. When we were children, we did childish things. But now we're adults, we continue in something. And what we continue in as Christians is the apostles' doctrine. All right? So there are the five steps. You've got conception, pregnancy, the deliverance, the baby speaking, and then the baby growing up and becoming mature. In order for you to become mature in your Christian faith, you need to be grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ. Then you need to continue in the apostles' doctrine. So what I want to show you today is I want to show you in the different places in scripture where we can see very clearly um, the plan of salvation. Let's start with Luke chapter 3 with Jesus Christ himself. Actually, no, let's start with Mark chapter 16 as I'm just here now. So Mark chapter 16. And the scripture says, in verse 16, the scripture says, He that believeth and is baptised shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So that's talking about your belief and baptism. So that's talking about the pregnancy aspect of being a Christian. Okay. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So that's the next part. You see, because then once you're once you're baptized in Jesus name, then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, because all throughout um, the Bible, the evidence of somebody receiving the Holy Ghost was always confirmed by the person speaking in tongues. So that right there is the deliverance process. So there we see the pregnancy and the deliverance process, the baby coming out. All right. So that's what we're seeing right here in Mark chapter 16. Then when we go to Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3 and verse 21. And as we're discussing, we are discussing the evidence of the plan of salvation in the many different scriptures that we can go to to prove it. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass 
uh, that Jesus also being baptized, see, so Jesus was baptized, that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, that's, that's, that's pregnancy, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Now Jesus has been baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's deliverance. Okay, that's, that's the baby coming out. Uh, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. So Jesus has now spoken tongues at his own baptism. You have to understand that Jesus Christ is one with his father. Jesus Christ and the father are one because Jesus Christ is one. So because of that fact, because of that fact, uh, Jesus Christ spoke in tongues at his own baptism. So there you're seeing the pregnancy, the deliverance with the evidence of tongues. Okay, praise the Lord. Now let's go to John chapter 3. Greetings, sisters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings to you, saints, in Jesus' name. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. See, so there's the next part of the plan of salvation. So Jesus is just evidence. There's the pregnancy of being born, born of water. And then there is um, the deliverance of the baby coming out of the Spirit, being born of the Spirit. There's the next two parts of the plan of salvation. So what we're seeing clearly is that Christ does have a plan for his people to go back to him. All right, let's continue. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and verse 37. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sit in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So he's reading the prophet Isaiah in his chariot. Then the spirit said, to, said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So Philip has now gone to the uh, to this eunuch, this Ethiopian man, um, and spoke to him about the scriptures. Verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And see, that's the first thing. Whenever I speak to somebody um, about Jesus Christ, you should always be able to tell me the first thing that you, the first thing that you remember me speaking about when you see me preach, and hopefully ten times out of ten, you'll hear me speak about Jesus Christ. You'll be, I'll be preaching about Jesus Christ. I'll be talking about the importance of baptism in the right name, Jesus Christ. You don't get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's invalid. You don't say the sinner's prayer because the sinner's prayer does not give you salvation. The sinner's prayer is about what you have done, not what Jesus has done. If you care about Jesus and you want to be with Jesus, then do what Jesus did and do what Jesus Christ has told you to do. Yeah? The sinner's prayer is about what you are doing for your salvation. Being baptized is about doing what somebody else has done for your salvation. And that somebody else is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, 
here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart. See? So what you have to understand is that we're dealing and we're talking about the plan of salvation and all the different evidences that we can see today. And we've been to Mark 16 and verse 16. Um, we've been to Luke chapter 3 verse 21. We've been to John chapter 3 and verse 5. Um, and now we're here at Acts chapter 8. All right. And all of those different scriptures that we've been to can show you the different stages of the plan of salvation. Because God does have a plan for you. Um, okay. If thou believest with all thine heart. So here what you're seeing is you're seeing conception. This is conception, all right, which comes before pregnancy, right? We told that, we spoke about that in the beginning. If you want to give birth, you go to the delivery room. If you want to get pregnant, you go to the bedroom. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. You see, it's very important the Bible says both Philip and the eunuch. Because one thing that we have today is we have people baptizing other people outside of the water. So if you were in the water and the person baptizing you was outside of the water, your baptism is invalid. Your baptism is invalid. You need to be baptized again. If you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, your baptism is invalid. If you are baptized in the name of Yeshu, Yeshua, or Yeshua, your baptism is invalid. If you are baptized, um, praise the Lord, by a female, if you are baptized by a woman, your baptism is invalid. If you are baptized, uh, praise the Lord, Murokeya basataranda yeme shete kekeki aboru yeme tetia maranda. If you were baptized, thank you, Jesus. If you were baptized without understanding why you were baptized, your baptism is invalid. Praise the Lord. If you, if you um, have, if you think that you're going to heaven based on the sinner's prayer, you're not going to heaven. You have to do it the way Jesus wants you to do it. All right, and we're going to go through all of that today. I believe we are going through it now. OK, so what you see in there is you're seeing a different part of the plan of salvation. You see in the conception in the heart, then you're seeing the baptism in water. All right. So you, so we've, we've gone through pregnancy and deliverance and we've gone through now conception in the heart and pregnancy. So that's one, two, three. OK. All right. They were both in the water. They were both in the water. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 and verse 27. And the keeper of the prison, were, uh, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out. If you got baptized, thank you, Jesus. If you got baptized by somebody who's not in the apostles doctrine, you should really on your heart believe that you need to be baptized again. Let me prove that with the scriptures. Second John chapter one, because then what, what, what is your faith in? Your faith is in a false doctrine by somebody who's not a real man of God. Second John chapter one, verse nine. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. So if you're not in the doctrine of Christ, you're transgressing. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the father and the son. See, that's the Bible. The Bible clearly says if you're not in the apostles doctrine, which is the doctrine of Christ, you do not have God. You do not have him. All right. Let that let let the word of God reign. Let the truth of God's word reign in your life and let the truth of God's word lead you. OK, Acts chapter 16 and verse 27. And the keeper of the prison are waking out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice because Apostle Paul was in jail at this time, 
saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You see, look at the, look at the heart condition. Look at the attitude. We just read in Acts chapter 8 that there was an Ethiopian eunuch who I think was, was third in all of command over um, under, under Candace herself. Number three in power in a whole country. And he was like, what can I do to be saved? In Acts chapter 2, they were saying, "What, brethren, what, what shall we do? In Acts chapter 16, what, what shall I do to be saved? Some people in, in this, you, that's the attitude that we need to have. What do I need to do to get with Jesus? What do I need to do to get to heaven? What do I need to do to make the rapture? What do I need to do to get baptized? How can I get it? How can I get this? You talk about this Holy Ghost. You talk about this peace. You talk about this joy. You talk about this righteousness. I want the love of Jesus Christ in my life. I want to feel Jesus Christ in the morning. I want to feel Jesus Christ in the afternoon. I want to feel Jesus Christ when I'm depressed. And I want him to lift me up. I want the strength of God. I want to be joyful with God. I want to suffer with God. I want to have tribulations with God. I want the trials, praise the Lord. In the evening, I want to feel Jesus Christ. I want to go to sleep and dream about Jesus Christ. I want to wake up and Jesus is on my mind. I want to wake up and Jesus is on my mouth. I want to talk to Jesus to my friends. I want to talk about Jesus to my family, to the neighbors, to the, to the homeless man. I want to talk about Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What do I have to do to get more of Jesus Christ? But you see, the problem is, the problem is, is that we want cigarettes and we want alcohol and we want masturbation and we want fornication and we want drugs and we want fighting and we want to gossip. We want to complain and backbite and do horrible things to other people and we want to listen to Keir Starmer and we want to listen to Joe Biden. We want to listen to Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. That is not the focus of a Christian. Christians don't care about what them people say. First of all, get yourself right with God. Because this isn't our home. This is just a resting. This is just a temporary temporary place. We've got somewhere else to go to. Praise God. Yeah? What must I do to be saved? If you're if you're if you feel that your salvation is insecure. What must I do to get my salvation secure? What must I do to make my salvation valid? Okay. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. So what you see right there? Is you're seeing conception and then baptism. That's what you're seeing right there. Yeah. That's what you're saying. That's what the Bible's saying. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's conception. Then get in the water and be baptized. So you're pregnant. Any anyone that leaves the concept look, if the conception process was gonna happen for too long, you would have a miscarriage or you would have an ectopic pregnancy. There won't be no pregnancy. Not to full term anyway. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter... You see, look, let me show you something real quick as well. In Matthew 28 and verse 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach. So what did he do? What did Paul do here? Uh, verse 32. Acts chapter 16, verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. They spake unto him the teaching of the apostles' doctrine. They told him repentance. They told him about uh, the apostles' doctrine and the plan of salvation. That's why, what must I do? So his curiosity was met with faith. So he had the faith to believe in what he was taught to be baptized. Listen, let me show you now where, because Apostle Paul, look, let me show you Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles 
of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms. See, I'm going to show you in Acts chapter 19 where the Apostle Paul was teaching the nations, teaching these people about the doctrine of baptisms. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? So there, what he's talking about is, is he's talking to them about the plan of salvation and being delivered. Are you delivered? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? Now we're starting to talk about the doctrine of baptisms. And because there's, there's more than one baptism in the Bible, but there's only one baptism that's necessary for your salvation. And they said unto John's baptism. Then, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So now he's talking to them about the doctrine of repentance and the importance of your water baptism. Uh-huh. Okay. A baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on, G on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So there we have the deliverance. Now let me show you, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Because I'm showing you all the different places of the plan of salvation in the scriptures. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Alright, so from verse 14 to verse 46, Peter is preaching at them. And their response in Acts chapter 2 and verse 37 is, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. See, because once you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord in your heart, and Jesus Christ is, the, is Lord to you, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God in flesh to you, then you have to repent. You have to repent. And in this, in this aspect, your repentance is understanding why your baptism in Jesus Christ's name is necessary. If you don't understand why you're being baptized, your baptism is invalid. All right, you can be baptized in Jesus' name and understand later because your, your, because your baptism has caught up with your knowledge. Your baptism has caught up with the faith, yeah? You, believe, you, you, look, you believed in your baptism here, but you didn't really understand why. But then later on, you was educated and your faith caught up to where you were. All right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See? That's talking about pregnancy and deliverance. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. See? So what you have there, praise the Lord, is you have the pregnancy, you have the deliverance, and then you have the child growing up and being mature in the apostles' doctrine. Now, we've spoken about the plan of salvation and all the different places in the scriptures that you can see the plan of salvation, which is one of the articles of the Apostles' Doctrine. But what I want to do now is I want to show you the importance of the different aspects of the plan of salvation, because it's important that you understand that. Ezekiel chapter 36. Um, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 24. The book of Ezekiel 36 and verse 24. Because we have to understand that the heart, the heart condition is really, really important. And this is why conception begins in the heart. For I will take you from among the heathen 
and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. So let's think about the prophetic aspect of that scripture. God wants us to be separate from the world. And when we've been separated from the world, then he wants to uh, gather us out of all the countries and bring us into our own land. He wants to bring us into a safe place. And that's him. Jesus Christ is our safe place. We're not going to speak about the land of Goshen that God has got waiting for us. But we are going to understand that the safe place God wants to bring us to is heaven. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. God wants us to take us, uh, take us away from the world. And then he wants us to be clean. He wants to baptize us in Jesus Christ's name. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart. See, God wants us to give God wants to give us a new heart. He wants us to be in a different condition, a better condition. A new heart, uh, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So God wants to give us the Holy Spirit to walk in the way. Okay, there's evidence right there of the heart condition being very important to God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Because God, God desires to speak with us through the gift of interpretation when we speak in tongues. So just as you heard me speaking in tongues earlier on, and I waited and God spoke back to me with the interpretation. Okay. Um, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing that, ye, that the, yet they would not hear. All right. God wants to speak to us in tongues. That right there is another confirmation of the deliverance aspect of the baby being born. I want to show you now Psalm chapter 51. Psalm 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. Excuse me. I am pretty tired, amen. I'm just tired all around. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken uh, and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So you have to understand right there, God, even David, yeah, uh, David's heart position towards God was, God, please give me a clean heart. Please make my spirit right with you, Lord. See? Because God's concerned with the heart condition. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Let's go to Acts chapter 5 verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived, conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things because things are conceived inside of your heart. So in order for something really to be, in order for something to be confirmed and sealed, whether it's good or bad, it will take place in your heart. So that's why your salvation of Jesus Christ begins in your heart and ends at heaven. Conception in your heart, baptism in water in Jesus Christ's name, Baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and then growing up, praise the Lord, and then growing up uh, in Jesus' name and continuing in the Apostles' Doctrine. Let me show you something what they use incorrectly. Romans chapter 10. 
Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's talking to Israel though. That's talking to Israel. So you can't use Romans chapter 10 if you're not an Israelite. And the real Israelites are not in modern day Israel. They're in the UK, the Caribbean um, and uh, America. And no, I'm not a black Hebrew Israelite. I'm an apostolic Christian, but the Bible is the Bible. That is not the plan of salvation. If you want to be facetious about it, it describes two it describes one aspect of the plan of salvation. That you, you, you confess things with your mouth and you believe in your heart. So that's the conception. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're saying that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God's raised him from the dead and that he's the son of God um, on the earth when you when you're being baptized and you understand your importance of baptism in jesus christ's name um and the repentance of that to get rid of adam's sin then yeah you, you're in the plan of salvation but don't think that you're just going to go on the street and say i repent of my sins i believe in the lord i'm saved kumbaya i'm going to heaven it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that all right, it doesn't work like that. Imagine Jesus Christ looking down from heaven. They, 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 they mocked him, they spat at him, they gave him vinegar to drink when he was first there, they, they made a crown of thorns, they parted the raiment, uh, prayed, they stabbed him in the side with the sword, they betrayed him. They vilified him, they falsely accused him, they wrongly accused him, they called him names, they punched him, they slapped him, they lied on his name, they blasphemed him, they, they plotted against him, they conspired against him. They did all of this to Jesus, then they made him carry his own cross, then they nailed him to the cross, then he was horrible to him on the cross. Even uh, the, the apostles betrayed him and ran away from him. All the people said, oh, we deny him. And then, and then, and then, and then he died. Praise the Lord. And then he was buried. And then he was resurrected and seen of the 12. Then he ascended. Uh, praise the Lord after that. And you're going to tell me, praise the Lord, that all of that that Jesus Christ did. And all you have to do is go on the street. Praise the Lord with your proud self is go on the street and say, I repent, I love Jesus, I want to follow Jesus and that's it and I'm done, see you in a bit and the next week you're back in the club and the week after that you're smoking and the week after that you're drinking alcohol and the week after that you're over there playing craps or you're doing dominoes or you or you're back in the bookies, you're back in the gambling shop, you're in the casino no, that's not the plan of salvation. That's your plan of salvation and the false doctrine's plan of salvation and the false church's plan of salvation. But that ain't the plan of salvation that we see in the Bible. So, praise the Lord. Come on, let's get it right. Come on. I know some people want to live saved. I know some people want to glorify Jesus Christ in their life. I know somebody wants to go to heaven. I know somebody wants to make the rapture. Do you want to make the rapture? We got these crazy politicians. Hallo, wie geht's? Bist du gut, ja? Ich spreche ein bisschen auf Deutsch. And we got these crazy politicians inside of the country talking about we got no money for the winter fuel payment for the pensioners. We got no money uh, to end child poverty, but we got 600 million for Ukraine. We got 600 million for the bombs. We got 600 million for the missiles. Just the over a week ago, we got uh, they sent I think it was one billion or 1.5 billion to Ukraine for more bombs for more missiles. Come on, man! You want to stay here with these liars? You want to stay here with these deceitful people whose heart's been filled by Satan? All right. All right. I know I don't want to stay in this country. I don't want to stay on this earth. When Jesus, when Jesus blows that trumpet, Lord, take me up. I'm ready, Lord Jesus. Take me up, praise the Lord. 
I don't want to stay here. I'm going up there with my baptism in Jesus' name. I'm going up there with the Holy Ghost and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'm going up there with fruits. I'm going up there in the Apostles' Doctrine. I'm going up there with righteous deeds. I'm going up there in holiness. I'm going up there in godliness. I'm going up there in righteousness. I'm going up there saved and sanctified. I'm going up there consecrated. And I'm going up there filled with the knowledge and the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have peace with all men. And I'm teaching other people to do the same. I'm teaching other people. I'm occupying until he comes. Praise the Lord. All right. Glory to God. All right, saints of God. Anyone who wants to be baptized in Jesus Christ's name, anybody who would like to join the ministry, God bless you. Just inbox me. You were all blessed as you were here. You'll be even more. Some of you might be dealing with witches. The Lord knows why I'm saying this. Some of you might be dealing with witches. Don't waste all your time returning curses to these witches. No, it may just be that when the Lord Jesus Christ looks on his righteous saint, on the saint that's living in holiness, when he looks, he's going to look at you and say, hold on a minute. These witches are trying to curse my people. I'm not going to let that curse hit them. I'm going to I'm going to repay their curses for blessings. So it may just be that when God looks on you, he says, no, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this curse for a blessing. So don't spend half your day returning the curse. Don't spend seven days worrying about the curse. Yeah, I don't have time for you, silly witch. I don't have time for you, silly wizard. Whatever. I've got to focus on my Bible. I've got to focus on fasting. I've got to focus on the doctrine. I've got to focus on holiness. I've got to focus on righteousness. I've got to focus on being saved and sanctified. I've got to focus on praying for my children. I've got to focus on living right. I've got to focus on uh, how can I break this gospel down and give it to my mum and my dad and my brother and my sister and my neighbour and my work colleagues and my manager at work and the bus driver. And, and the person, praise the Lord. Hey, come on. We don't have time for these silly witches with the silly witchcraft. No, no, no. Our faith is going higher. But when it's time to smash the coven in Jesus' name, the coven's going to get smashed. When it's time to dismantle their weapons, when it's time to take their territories off them for the glory of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll do that. But right now, little witch, right now, little wizard, it ain't your time of the show. Sit down. We don't need to focus on you right now because it ain't your time of the program. When it's time for your program, you'll see us in your city. You will see us in your village. You will see us in your town. You will see us at your satanic altar, breaking it down and smashing it to pieces <laughs> with the power of prayer and anointing it in the name of Jesus Christ. But right now, it's not your time of the program. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right? Because we, we are on fire for Jesus Christ. We are on fire for Jesus. We're on fire for Jesus. So when it's time to take everything off the enemy, we'll take it off him. But it ain't your time of the program right now. Amen. So you can do all of these little things that you want to do. Keep sending the curses because it's going to keep increasing the blessings. Hallelujah. All right. Saints, you are blessed as you are here. You'll be even more blessed as you go. May the Lord keep you and guide you and cause his face to shine upon you now and forevermore in Jesus Christ's name. Saints of God, if you want anything from me at all, please see my inbox in Jesus' name. Good night and God bless you.